here at New City Gas, a huge number of events indoors, everything from a World Symphony Orchestra to dance performances to art exhibits and really good food. Um, here, you're right now at a site called La Dalhousie, which is a, a community event space. We got a permit from the borough to use this space to have various sorts of events. We have everything from uh, underwear drives for homeless shelters to musical performances to poetry evenings. It's going to be a video projection uh, from the building at the corner of Anne in Ottawa as well uh, by um, Annis and La Perriere. There's also going to be a group of muralists who will be doing paintings on the garage doors at that corner building at Anne in Ottawa and along Anne Street. A huge number of us are participants and, and involved in actually making it happen. So we're going to be here not just to take in what other people are doing, but to do our own thing, whether it be uh, give a lecture or read some poetry or show some art. And, and in that sense, it's important on, a, on an individual personal level for a lot of us. As for a community as a whole, it's important in the sense that a lot of us would really like to see this sort of thing not only retained but encouraged in this neighborhood as it redevelops. There was a point where it looked like the whole neighborhood was just going to be raised and replaced with shopping malls and towers. We've, we've made some headway, that's not the blanket plan anymore, but there's still a fair bit of that coming in. And uh, for Montreal as a whole, to come down and see Griffintown and see the potential. Most people who live in their own city need to take a holiday in their own city. They, they seem to go on tour bus rides when they go to Paris or New York or something. They don't really get a feel for the neighborhoods that they don't live in. And so uh, with all the, because of all the news and, and a bit of the political controversy, it's kind of reawakened somewhat of an interest of people down in the neighborhood. We get a lot of, 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 of nice weather walkers, so to speak. Uh, um, coming through here on the weekends, something that didn't exist five years ago because of all the publicity and stuff. And people seem to have heard about it now. Although um, I think that if you stop people at Place Victoria Metro or Bonaventure Metro, which are, the, which are just three or four blocks from here, and ask them how to get to Griffintown, they wouldn't have a clue. Uh, you have to understand that this whole neighborhood stretching from here all the way to past that water market uh, and into the, into the old port was once all very vibrant industrial community uh, with all kinds of large uh, and small factories and manufacturing uh, things. The fur trade was big down here, the steel industry, uh, of course shipping and, and, and anything to do with the port and the railway were all down here. And, and this is, I guess, just an attempt to uh, categorize and document uh, what still exists before it's gone. Uh, this is tied into Nuit Blanche because we get, we, we, we freeload the free publicity in the cities. It's nice wintertime adventure, so to speak, and I was kind of coerced into, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to allow it, to, to connecting it to Nuit Blanche. It wasn't my first choice, mm -hmm. um, but, um, uh, it's just one of many events that we ho hold down here. And inside we have music and dance and poetry and art and uh, photography and theater and lectures as well and well just an evening of, of culture and, and uh, we hope that uh, that we have a measure of, uh, of the community uh, coming in and seeing how we live down here. This place once was home to a very vibrant and very hardworking and dispossessed uh, group of people, and mostly immigrants coming through here, and uh, I suppose the lower echelons of society that lived in this neighborhood over the last 200 years. Um, culturally, uh, it's just to try and sh show that there's room for culture in bigger urban environments, and that some of it's worth preserving, and that. It doesn't have to be elitist because most people get the idea that culture is elitist, whether it's opera or galleries on, on Sherbrooke Street or museums that are kind of look but don't touch situations. This is kind of the opposite. This is touch and look as much as you like. The, the idea of promoting the, uh, the cultural corridor came from looking at Ottawa Street, which is a 
uh, the east-west axis of importance in Griffintown. Um, and it connects up to the east with Old Montreal and to the west with other neighborhoods, Little Burgundy and St. Henry and Cote St. Paul. Um, the cultural corridor as a proposal, as a whole, an idea, extends through all of those neighborhoods, but the germ of it started here because this neighborhood is under redevelopment. And now is the time when, if we're gonna have any influence on what happens going forward, it's the time to do it. Five years from now, it'll be, well, it'll, I wouldn't say too late, you can always do something, but, you know, once those towers are surrounding us and it's, dark and windy down at street level, well, I don't know, I might be moving. <laughs> <laughs>